Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're going to revisit a dying project, or really a question that I wish I had answered in 2019. Back when I was playing around with how I was going to develop the 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah colorway, I used some fluorescent colors and put them under a bunch of black. And I really wanted to see, one of the questions I had was, will we see the light of those fluorescent colors shine through the black when we look at it under a black light? And so that's what we're going to do today. Since I neglected to finish that thought in that video at the end of 2019, we're going to do this today. We're going to dye some yarn with some stunning fluorescent colors and then over dye some of it in black look at it all under a black light to see if you can see those fluorescent tones under the black or not. Today's video is sponsored by Berkeley. Uh, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and if you would like to learn about how you could sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, uh, you can find a link to the listing in my Etsy shop in the video description. In the pan right here I have four skeins of Knit Pick Swish DK yarn. This yarn is a hundred percent superwash merino and you guys know I like it. I use this one a lot. Um, I did not wring these out from the pre-soak. So we're sort of reusing some of that water here, which also means our water isn't exactly measured, um, but I think that's okay. I will want more water in here. I do want the fluorescent colors that I'm gonna add to spread out. The pan we are in is a catering steam pan that is four inches deep. Links to the yarn, the pan, and other equipment that I use. You can find all of that in the video description. I'm going to add the rest of that pre soak water and gosh, about. So this is one quarter cup. I'm going to add two quarter cups of water, which is about, oh goodness, maybe one quarter cup is eight tablespoons, maybe 16 tablespoons. It's not a tiny amount of water, but fluorescent colors do take more acid, heat, and time. Um, you want to, with some of these colors, you're gonna need to just wait for the color to all absorb. Now I'm coming in with another six cups of water. And so there's enough liquid in here now that the yarn isn't compressed. It still fills most of the area, but it's not, the, the dye will be able to travel through a little better. So I found that when where colors are first added, they tend to have a lot more of that fluorescent power. Um, so right here, I just added some 1% stock solution of purple pop. This is a color I highly recommend using sparingly. Um, by sparingly, if you add too much, uh, it, I mean, a little goes a long way. And this color, um, you know, it'll go far and you want it to be able to absorb in the end somewhere. So that's purple pop and you can see those more that pink spread and the little purple spots. Another color we're going to use is this fluorescent lemon, um, which again, where I first placed it, it will show up the most um, under the black light. And you can see, I guess we're fairly high acid. These colors are striking pretty quickly. Now, if you're worried what's gonna happen when you mix purple and yellow, I think we're gonna get a really nice, like orangey and pink kind of color. There's very little blue in that purple pop, so I think that it's gonna be really, really pretty. I also have some dilute fluorescent fuchsia, um, which I will probably be adding here or there. It had just like a tiny bit left in this bottle and I filled it up with some water. But we're going to sort of randomly apply these colors on. You can see I'm not doing going for horizontal lines. Um, I don't know if I've ever dyed four skeins in the pan before. But yeah, let's get to it and create our bright, sort of fluorescent, glowy backdrop. I really enjoyed how this combination of colors felt very floral. I think that those more purple speckles really 
sort of added like an edge to the color. Um, and I was really excited. I started adding the yellow just all over, especially since colors are striking a little faster than I expected, which is really good, but we might preserve some more yellow and pink and that orange of the cross section. I didn't wait a long time between flipping the yarn in places because I just liked what was happening in there. I did make sure to flip multiple times because 400 grams of yarn in one pan is a little bit crowded, so we want to be able to check the inside of the skeins. As I was going through this yarn, um, I would take my more dilute fluorescent fuchsia and add it in just select areas that I felt needed a little more pink, but I didn't want to add the extra oomph that that purple pop is bringing in with that bluish center. I haven't yet decided how much black I want to add when I over dye some of these with black. If I want to go for something that feels more opaque or if we think we might see some of these shifts and undertones underneath it. Um, I'm leaning towards the heavier side because again I'm curious if we'll still see the fluorescence in there or not. Towards the end, I realized that the skeins on the ends had better color coverage than the one in the middle. Um, probably because as I'm zigzagging, they're getting a little heavier squirt. So I moved the outside ones to the inside and the inside to the outside for that final round. Finally, I hit the point where I think I needed to stop. <laughs> I needed to stop adding more color. Um, it's hard. It's hard when you're like, Ooh, this area doesn't have enough or that area doesn't have enough but as you move the yarn you see that the lines where I added the purple pop and you see those little specks those get broken up and it gets sort of like moved around more in the yarn and I think that what we have is so pretty honestly I don't think the camera is picking up all the tones and doing it justice I'll have to see while editing but this yarn is really pretty this, oh, I'm trying to think of what flower it makes me think of. I mean, it doesn't have like the blue and orange of like a bird of paradise, but something like it looks like a beautiful summery floral bouquet. And it's funny because I think that this yarn could have felt very sunset, but these little more purple pops, ha, purple pop, um, don't make it feel sunsetty to me. They really make me feel more floral. But what I came here to say, I'm now going to wait for 10 minutes, um, just sort of leave things here, and then maybe we'll add some more water and check and see how well set everything is. Okay, it's been 10 minutes later, and I'm now going to add just a lot of water in here. Make sure everything is spread out. And, I mean, things are looking fairly clear, but I just want to move it around. And this is also a point where we can check and see, is there anywhere where I wish that I had more color? And right now I'm thinking no. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with this. I am going to um, bring this up to temperature, but then I'm going to turn off the heat. Um, I mean, I think the color is really well set already. So goodness. Okay, maybe actually I'm going to turn off the heat now. So now I'm going to turn off the heat and let this cool off a bit more so then I can overnight two of these skeins with some black. In my dedicated dye pan I have eight cups of water and now we're going to add some black. I'm planning on covering up 200 grams of yarn with the black color. So I'm going to start by adding half of a cup of our 1% stock solution, which was about 120 milliliters or 1.2 grams of dye. Um, this would be, oh, huh. That's what I would have done for, you know what, we can always add more, so yeah, let's just start small. Um, this is the amount that I might have done for 100 grams, and so that's why I started hesitating, but I can always double up the dye later on, so yeah, let's go for this. And I have not yet added any acid in here. I will do that momentarily. And our beautiful fluorescent vibrant colors are warm, but they aren't yet like hot, hot. 
So I'm going to put it in and sort of move it around. Okay. I definitely could have done more black, but this might end up giving some really good coverage, and I am going to let this be what it is. But I'm moving the yarn around so that way we get some nice coverage there with our black dye. I am going to turn the heat on so we can start heating this up. And for our acid, I'm going to go for a quarter. Uh, let's go ahead and do a half cup. There was some acid on the yarn already, but not a ton. Um, I mean, there was a lot of acid in our previous pot, but then we diluted it and we've just added it to a lot more water. So this is a dark yarn, but you can see, especially on camera, that we do have some of those nice undertones. And so I could add more black, but I think that this colorway will be black, but have some like depth and dimension in it, which is good. So going for, I guess we're going for pretty much exactly a 0.6% DOS here today. So now I'm going to heat things up and yeah, let it heat for 20 minutes. We want the dye bath to clear as much as possible. It's been 20 minutes and I'm now going to turn off the heat. The yarn looks really, really dark, but don't despair. If you look, you can see, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty steamy right now, but I can definitely see some more like yellow and pink undertones in here. There is some color in the pot, which could be a result of some of the fluorescent ones. I think that this yarn is awesome. How awesome waits a tiny bit to be seen, because if I can see more of the shifts versus it looking mostly black um, with under, I guess, normal light, then I will be excited and it will probably be one of my favorites of the two sets, especially if we can still see those fluorescent colors under the black light. But let's wait. Um, I'm going to leave the yarn in here to cool completely and then we'll wash it. Our neon yarn has not cooled completely. It's cooled off enough so it was like comfortable, but I'm going to wash it anyway now. Um, so just plopping it in just a plain tap water and wahoo! I do not currently see any bleeding, which is awesome. There might be some bleeding now. Then I'm going to add some clear disco. These frozen colors can be tricky, but they're so pretty and fun to use that worth it. I mean, awesome. I am not seeing any pink or yellow come off. I am going to rinse out all of the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer. Now we are going to wash our over dyed yarn and our dye bath is completely clear. Okay, now in the water. I am not seeing any bleeding and we are going to add a little bit and my water's on. I have some clear dish soap in here just to see because sometimes that will cause bleeding to start and it's a nice little like check. I do rinse a tiny bit longer, well a bit longer than I show on camera, but the addition of water is not making color bleed. I do see some yellow in there and I think this yarn is really, really cool. I'm just curious what it'll look like dry, if we'll see a little more nuance and what it'll look like under a black light. So the next time you see me, we'll be taking a look at the dry yarn. Once I rinse out the soap, I'll put it through my Nina Soft Spin Dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we'll come back and take that closer look. The over-dyed yarn is beautiful and subtle. It looks like a charcoal gray yarn with these pops of pink and yellow in there. I think, I think that this is such a pretty, pretty yarn. But whoa, does it feel different from what it was originally? The original yarn is neon yellow with pink and hints of orange and these pop of purple speckles. It is extremely floral, bright, but not so saturated that it screams neon, but it's a beautiful floral tropical colorway. I'm about to go look at this under a black light, and 
This is the point of one of the sponsored videos that I do where I'm gonna have to take a gamble. Berkeley, oof, these are pretty and I think that you would like all the colors, but the character between the skeins feels so, so different. It's gonna be really hard for me to decide which ones I'm gonna send to you. It's the moment of truth. I have not yet looked at this under the black light. Let's turn off the overhead. And there we go. Okay, so first thoughts, oh, before I block it, um, you can see the glow in the first skein. Those yellows especially are popping. And that was some of the most concentrated color. Looking at our overdyed skein, they look almost nothing alike. So you can see when I don't shine the light directly on our brighter skeins, you can then see them glow, right? You see those pops. And when I sort of do the same, you don't really see it. There are definitely some fluorescent pops in here. And while the whole thing honestly looks very pink under the black light to me, I don't think that that really shows. The pinks, maybe I should. Uh, the pinks over here that glow are very subtle and I feel like this yarn looks pink. Let's flip it and see. Okay, here I see some fluorescent spots um, over here as well. So there are bits that fluoresce. It's just not anywhere near as much as the previous skein. So what do I think is going on here? Um, you do see some fluorescence in these darker skeins and they looked identical to the ones on the left when we put them in the pot. If this is an experiment, then we definitely have some controls missing. I did not put some of these skeins in a pot of water for the same amount of time without the black dye. Um, I could dye the yarn in black first and then try adding on the fluorescent speckles because maybe there you would see those pops sort of shine through. Or maybe there's something about the black that absorbs some color. Um, you know, I did see it did look all over pink, which you couldn't really capture uh, with the camera, but it looked cool under the black light. You just didn't see the like specks and pops from where the dye first absorbed to the yarn like you do in our pretty floral one. I have a lot more questions. We can take another look at this in the future and vary up the techniques a little bit. Um, or I mean, I guess control for more variables to see if we see anything differently. But who knows? Who knows if in the time in the black pan, some of the bleeding that can happen with some of these fluorescent dyes happened and gave the whole yarn sort of that wash of color. There's a lot of different possibilities and we don't know until we test, but that is part of the fun of filming these dyeing experiments. Berkeley, thank you so, so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I think, whew, I really like both yarns, both the like happy, bright floral, and then the more muted, almost tonal charcoal gray with the pops of yellow and pink. Ultimately, I think the more neon bright yarn is a bit more exciting. So I think this is the one I'm gonna send you. If this yarn had really had those fluorescent pops under the black light, then this would have been the winner in my eyes. But when I dye multiple colorways in one video, I always send the sponsor the one I think is the most exciting. Um, yeah, so Berkeley, I hope you love it. And again, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy my videos and want to help support the content that you see here, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patrons get early access to a new video each month in the Dye Pop PS series. You can vote in polls that help shape the direction of content on the channel and more. You can find more details on the Patreon link in the video description and iCard. Oh, I am just so excited and yeah, make sure that you're subscribed and have your notifications on so you never miss a new video. 2020 is starting off strong and we've got some really beautiful colors coming out and honestly, you don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching everyone.